Psalm 67 in verses 3 and 4 continues this prayer song of prophecy. Uh, uh, Verse 3 and 4 reads, Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you will judge the people with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Selah. Though still in our future, this fulfills the prophecy God gave to Abraham, and we read about this in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those that treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. At his first coming, Jesus came to uh, the children of Israel, according to Matthew 15, 26. He will return again to gather the church in the clouds. This will happen only in the blink of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. This is not the second coming of our Lord to establish his throne in Jerusalem. Rather, our Lord's second coming will be at the end of the tribulation period, and then every eye will see him. According to Revelation 1.7, the entire earth will be so convicted by the chaos that had preceded his return that every knee will bow to his authority as the righteousness of Christ begins his reign on the throne in Jerusalem, where the nations will be governed with justice and righteousness, leaving humanity without excuse not to worship God Almighty. For 1,000 years with the devil incarcerated, the nations of the earth will be glad and sing for joy. We can garner more details about this in Isaiah 66, uh, reading from 18 to 21. So I will gather all the nations and the people together, and they will see my glory. I will perform a sign among them, and I will send those who survive to be messengers to the nations, to Tarish, to the Libyans, to Lydians, who are famous archers, to Tubal and Greece, to all of the lands beyond the sea that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. There they will declare my glory to the nations. They will bring the remnant of your people back to the every nation, back from every nation. They will bring them to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord. They will ride on horses and chariots and wagons, on mules and camels, says the Lord. And I will appoint some of them to be my priests and Levites. I, the Lord, have spoken. There is a false theology in circulation called replacement theology that declares that God is done with Israel. If that were true, then either this prophecy has already been fulfilled, and it hasn't, or God is, who is the word, is not immutable or unchangeable, and he is. Jesus himself is the word, therefore, It is absolute, immutable, and unchanging. Read John uh, 1, 1 carefully. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His name is confirmed in Revelation 19, 13. He wore a robe stained with blood, and his name is the Word of God. There is a similar confirmation in Hebrews 4, 12. When we pick up the word, do we treat it with the awesome respect due Christ? 